Well, good afternoon, my friends. I hope you're enjoying a wonderful day. The sun is shining. A little cool outside, but you're in the warm, I know. So nice to be with you again this afternoon. And I hope you're hearing some little background music that our wonderful concert pianist, Sue, is playing for us. You know, there's a saying about little things in life. They say it's the little things that can end up being the big things. Uh, this can be true in our relationships, in volunteer work, ministry, and everyday living. It's those little things that sometimes have a big effect. I mean, a tiny mouse can terrify a huge elephant. And a young shepherd boy with a proper vision was able to defeat a giant who had defied armies. You know, the dripping faucet you hear in the day, you pay no attention to it, but it rings out like a maddening racket at night, doesn't it, when you're trying to get sleep. You know, it's also the little things that sometimes we can be grateful for and rejoice in. And then on the other hand, it's those little things heaped upon us that unsettle us and bring despair. You know what I'm talking about. The little things that bug us. It's no wonder we find ourselves feeling overwhelmed when we deal with these tiny daily bits of discouragement that tend to weigh in on us with negative thoughts. You turn on the TV news and at any given time you see so much bad news it could make you think, well, maybe I should just lock myself up in my home and get rations rather than go out and be exposed to this terrible world. But as Christ's followers, we are not called to live our lives in fear or discouragement over the, the mundane, those little things. We must get by those little annoying events. We're reminded throughout Scripture, do not fear. Not because God is in charge and he will take care of us, his children. That's why we don't fear. But sometimes that phrase, fear not, eludes us. And instead, we fester over those little things, don't we? So where do we go for relief? How do we rise above the daily onslaught of discouraging news, circumstance, and events that life dishes out on our plate? How do we keep our heads above water when we feel like we're drowning in a world-sized ocean of needs we cannot meet? How do we remain positive when we live in fear of an increasingly disgruntled society? The answer, my friends, is through love, where there is no fear. In 1 John 4.18, he tells us, there is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. In our flesh, John goes on to say, we are truly prone to wander from the truth. But we have one who never, never wanders from our side. And he is love. Listen to the master. When he was preparing his disciples for his imminent departure, he said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. I see three basic truths there. First, we live in a world that guarantees us trouble because it is a world controlled by our enemy. In 1 John it says, we know that we are children of God and that the whole world is under control of the evil one. That is why we ultimately look forward to the new heaven and earth. Secondly, Jesus has overcome this world through his death burial, and resurrection. Hallelujah. We are his people called to proclaim his goodness and mercy. We're witnesses of his grace. We are, you are the redeemed. 
third, Jesus tells us that in him we have peace. He only asks us to do one thing. Those words, take heart. Take heart. He was telling his disciple, and he's telling us to trust him. The fact is, we have trouble, but the truth is, Jesus lives. As his disciples, you have a daily choice to make. To fight the discouragement of the little things that would otherwise rob us of the peace that Jesus promises. We can focus on those minor troubles, or we can rely on the fact that Jesus has overcome the world. My friends, I don't know about you, but take heart. Our Savior lives. Let us pray. Dear Father, thank you for your words. We shall not fear, Father, because you have redeemed us. Your love has redeemed us and taken away all those little things that nag us and bother us that we need to put aside and say, that doesn't matter. That is insignificant. Father, thank you for that word. Thank you for your assurance that you will overcome those little things that bother us. So, Father, be with my friends for the rest of this day. And I give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, my friends. And have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.